My latest favorite champion in the game, Turvold, aka Big T, absolutely terrorizing the current meta of Mariska and Taras. I'm gonna do a showcase on him and show you guys how you can use him right at the top of Platinum Arena. Let's jump into it. Now, before we get into some fights, I wanna address what makes Turvold great now there are others really good strong single target nukers we have rodos we have georgia we have basilius we have ronda but what makes turval that guy now to answer that question we need to look at his kit a bit more deeply now his a2 does buffs itself now he has increased attack which means he does not need to rely on duchess or arbiter to give him that boost of attack he can just land it on himself so that's fantastic now he also does increase crit rate on himself now i'm of the consensus that even if your champion gives you increased crit rate you want to build your champion with 100 crit so he does not not crit however in turbo's case because he has 100 upkeep of these buffs making him 70% crit rate and rather than the extra 30% crit rate adding that to damage is much more beneficial in my opinion you can build him with 70 or 100 is entirely up to you i have mine at 70 i've been testing him for a week and a half and i recommend building him with 70 but it's entirely up to you what you want to use then you have increased speed now increased speed was not considered a good buff for nukers because we were in the slow meta and everybody was trying to aoe nuke so we were trying to let reaction laps and then we were trying to one shot all of the opponent's team and if anybody survived we would reset and then nuke again however this team relies on turbo whose single target nukes everything down with his massive a3 you need him to take be able to take a few turns where you can one by one chop down the opponents and basically you can just move on so increased speed is actually really good and you'll see i'll have him built with I would recommend building with 182 to 110 speed. Mine's around about 180-ish. So that's the kind of speed I would like. Increased speed also helps with that case as well. And then you have the big money ability, Juggernaut. This is a incredibly hard hitting ability that's damage does not rely on ignore defense. Now that's a really important thing in this current meta. Right now we have a champion that reduces your ignore defense abilities damage and you know who that is. It's Harima, exactly. Now, that champion, if you run a Baron into her, if you run a Georgian into her, you'll see your damage will be reduced significantly. However, with Turvold, his damage is reduced. His Savage damage will be reduced, his Helm Smash damage will be, will be reduced and his Cruel damage will be reduced. However, his ability damage will not be reduced, therefore he has less of a penalty when he hits into Harima teams. So his damage is very respectable even versus Harima teams. So he will be doing big numbers even if the Harima on the opponent is mitigating a lot of it, he's still going to be able to one-shot opponents with this ability. And one-shotting is very important. Making sure you secure kills with this ability is very important because you want to have this up all the time. If the target is killed, resets the ability of this skill. So you must kill with this ability for you to be able to get it back around. The reason why it's so important because his A1 has a weaken, has a bit of a sheep chance. You don't really want to risk getting sheeped even though you have low accuracy. It can still happen sometimes. And this ability does way more damage. So avoid hitting into reaction avoid hitting into stone skin always look for opponents that you can kill if there's no opponent on enemy's team where you think well this champion has reaction everybody has stone skin you can just go ahead and do a1 into stone skin we can won't land you won't be sheep chancing so you'll be completely fine now as amazing as turvold is i'm gonna go ahead and ask for a buff now plarium have decided to put one of the best champions with a faction crypts aura in my opinion it's disrespectful giving a champion faction crypts aura means you believe this champion is good for faction crypts and i'm about to show you that's not the case so plarium if you're listening you're probably not but if you are give my boy some love give him an actual aura give him speed give him crit rate i don't know give him anything give him something that is used in every single uh, area of the game just a little bit of buff for this amazing amazing Legacy Barbarium Turbo, I, I believe, is one of the first Void legendaries to be in the game. And right now he's meta, so, you know, get, show him some love. Give him an actual aura so we can, you know, play around with it a little bit more. 
But yeah, despite that, he's a fantastic, fantastic champion. And we're going to do some arena fights. Let me jump into some arena and show you guys exactly how this composition is built, why he's so great. Now, a very important thing is for any team to be good, you need a core of three champions. For a team to be great, you need a core of two champions. And this team has a core of two champions. It is Necre plus Tarvold. These two between themselves have the survivability and the damage to take down anything. We already know what Necrit does. Big protection for Yanukas. Since he's been out, he's been meta in arena offense. He has an ally attack and Turvold is really, really good with his A1-2. Even though he has a weakened chance, you still can play around with it. And then you have the big ally protection, which is the big min money ability. He lands ally protection, he also gives block debuffs and he tops up the shield every time it gets depleted and then your champion gets hit again. Ally protection for 6 turns, this is not the Necrit showcase. We already know what Necrit does and how fantastic he is but what this does is it enables a very very strong core for you. My Necrit is in stone skin, the blessing I would recommend for Necrit would be um, bone armor, any survivability um, blessing you can take a lot of people would say life harvest there's this new craze going around with life harvest versus marishka teams however you'll see the team that i run never really lets anybody get the revive of the marishka off we run lydia to make sure that never happens so i'll be showing you that life harvest is not what i would recommend for this team um you can try cruelty cruelty is a really interesting blessing because he does ally attack with a triple hit, you can decrease the defense of the opponent and then your turbo can go, go in and do big damage. You can run that. Bone armor to make sure your Necrit is big, tanky, uh, gives extra HP too. So the shield he will be putting on turbo from the passive will be bigger and he will be tankier himself. So you can play around that. You can also run Aura too if you want. With turbo, I recommend running Phantom Touch. People are running Lightning Cage. I tried Lightning Cage last week didn't do so well. Uh, Rodos was much more of a pain than I gave him credit for. So I died to a few Rodoses because there was no Phantom Touch giving me that extra bit of damage to make sure I ignore or kill off the shield of Rodos and do enough damage. But yeah, I recommend Phantom Touch on him. The team I would put around him is, I'll show you my presets. I have 45 presets with slight variations and they start right here. We have the first preset, we have Yumiko. So this is going to be a lockout, Necrit, Turvold and Lydia team. You lock out the Reviver and then you block um, Marishka's Revive with Lydia. Then we have the Kaima uh, and the Cardiel. This is for a team that runs Yuko and a lock. So that way you can reset, you can cleanse if Yuko stuns you. You can do ally attacks and all the good stuff. Then you have Mari lock. So this is uh, facing opponent teams where they run a lockout and a marishka you can unlock your team then you can go ahead and do your damage and kill everything and then you have a mari yuko so here we are looking to counter yuko with cardiel again which is a really good counter you'll see in practical action and then the last one we have is a yuko team let's go ahead and jump into some fights uh, mainly i want to be attacking big uh, marishka defenses now here i would put this team that i'm about to fight under the marishka revive the Revive from Sifi, the Marishka also is there. And then we have two Nukas. We're going to go ahead and start this fight. It's going to be fully on auto. I recommend killing off the opponent Reviver first. So you can just go ahead and click on her. So their speed champions go first. Our Yumiko goes and locks them out. Our, Marish our Lydia will do AoE, which will make her take a hit from Taras. We will then kill off um, Sifi as soon as we get a turn. The two hits coming in, kill her off. Now, I didn't manage to click on Rodos because, you know, I'm... <laughs> you stupid. I'm, uh, yeah, I misclicked there. I should have clicked Rodos for us to be able to get the damage. But it's not really going to make too much of an issue. We'll just uh, kill off Marishka now since she's low already. Um, we'll just put a Hex here because we'll be sharing some damage. Ideally, I want you to uh, do damage to Rodos so we can kill him with the ally attack. But it's all good. We're going to go ahead and ally attack now and kill off Rodos and then we'll just go ahead and click on Taras. There you see Marishka's revive did get blocked by Lydia and then Lydia came back to life. 
The only time that doesn't happen is when Lydia is sheeped. So it's important not to get sheeped by Lydia. You want to make sure you do your abilities and debuffs on champions who have blocked debuffs. So nice and easy, 58 seconds. I believe it was 58 seconds, around about that much. Uh, let's see if we have any other champions I would see at reset. This is a very interesting team. This is the team, I believe, the guy who finished second last week was running. Chester was running this team. Um, he has Mariska, Yuko, Rodos, and UDK. So let me try the Yuko. Uh, Yuko team, Yuko plus Mariska, I believe I named it. Okay. We're going to let Yuko do his debuffs. My Cardiel is built with the right amount of speed to go after Yuko's. So he will always be around about 280 speed. Yuko's are in 300s uh, quite comfortably. Here you can see we did not actually get stunned. If we got stunned, we would have cleansed with Cardiel and then ally attacked with Necrit. But because we didn't get stunned, we have an opportunity to be able to just kill off Rodos here. We can kill Rodos or we can kill Yuko, whichever one we want. I'm going to go ahead and kill Yuko because that's what I would normally do. And then Rodos will come in for a hit. He hit Lydia. Even if he did his big nuke into uh, Turbo, it wouldn't be an issue. We'd be able to tank up. Cardio is reducing damage. And we have some shield uh, from uh, Necrit's passive. We're going to go ahead and kill off uh, Mariska. The first hit's going to go going to go into UDK. But the second hit, I believe, should be enough with increased crit damage and increased attack. Let's see. Look at that, 140k. Big boy damage from big T. Now, the ally attack you'll see is the first hit that comes from Necrit will go into UDK, but every other hit after that will go straight into the champion. So we'll see we're doing the damage right there. Roros proc swift parry and stayed alive, but it's okay. We can just go ahead and just chip him away. And then we just pull it on auto and let the stone skin expire so we can just kill off this um udk so almost breaking stone skin there uh really really nice damage there goes the stone skin uh udk is gonna take a turn and then we're just gonna clean him off oh we didn't have the aoe there or we didn't have the a3 there we had the a1 the a1 damage is significantly lower than uh, the a3 damage but we got it there, done there a bit of expl explaining throughout the fight but you generally get the gist Against this team, I want to be able to lock out the Taras. If you do not lock out the Taras, he would punish you, especially the well-built Tarasses. With a team with Sifi and Duchess, you want to make sure you lock out Tarasses. So here we go. We're going to have Sifi go first. Uh, we're going to click on Sifi because she's the reviver. Oh, I have brought the wrong team here. I should have brought Lydia instead of Cardiel, but that's okay. Uh, it just means we're going to have to kill off um we're gonna have to kill off Mariska multiple times sorry we're gonna have to kill um Sifi multiple times so we're just gonna go ahead and do the kill here we do not have our block revive otherwise we wouldn't have let Mariska revive but we're gonna go ahead and do this I'm gonna probably back out this fight and do it again with the right team but yeah there you see nice and easy 36 37 seconds but if you want to avoid this um, you don't want opponents to get the revive off can make sure you're always stopping them from reviving. So what we're going to do is rather than bringing Cardio, we're going to bring in the Lydia and lock out Sifi and the Taras. Killing off Sifi and then taking all the team down one by one. Not letting Mariska revive. So we're going to go ahead and lock them out here. No ability for Taras. Lydia will do the AoE. Um, having Lydia do an ability here and have a... Dying is good, having her lower HP than Turvold is good because that means the ally attacks from Mariska won't go into him, uh, into Turvold, it would, they would go into Lydia. So here we will kill off uh, Mariska and get in our Lydia back. Then we're going to go ahead and kill Taras. And then we're going to go ahead and just clean up the rest. Uh, Stoutus this is. I don't know what Stoutus is doing here, but he's here anyway. Let's see if we can find any others. I believe we fought Zig Panda before. Let me take a look. Yeah, we did fight Zig Panda. Um, we'll just go ahead and skip Zig. This is an interesting team. Um, it's a Cardio. Now, Cardio's Revive on Death cannot be blocked by uh, Lydia, but this team doesn't have Mariska, so we don't really need to bring Lydia. We can bring Cardio, plus we can bring Yumiko. 
So we should be able to get our Yumiko to go before opponent's Taras. Even though they do buffs and they go first, it's not an issue because we'll be locking out Taras. And then we can see who we want to kill first. Um, this card here does have massive, massive resistance. He didn't resist my Yumiko there, but I wouldn't have been surprised if he did. Um, just means we're going to have to kill everything twice. There goes Cardia once. Um, I actually want to kill off this Taras. I believe he's t already taken a turn too. So I'm going to go ahead and try to kill him with my stray up Taras doing uh, with Turbo. Yeah, massive, massive damage. Gets the revive there. We kill him off. Uh, we can just basically auto. Kill off Sifi or kill off Cardio because Cardio, in my opinion, is more annoying. He just revives just non-stop. Mm, Sifi will revive Cardio eventually. Here, she doesn't have ally protection, so we'll just go and kill her. And then we go back and straight ahead kill off Nekri. So even if the team doesn't have Marishka, you can still deal with pretty much everything with this team. Uh, you just need to make sure you are killing everything in the right order. Mortu Macabre is a champion I would probably stay away from just because his stone skin makes it so we're not running a strip. We can't do damage or we can't guarantee damage into stone skin. So I would stay away from Mortu just slightly with this team. We can try Marishka team's more so. Since this was more of a Marishka counter team, we can run it into other teams, but I don't really... Um, I have better ways of dealing with them, so I don't really use this team for that. Here we have Lydia, sorry, here we have Marishka, we have Lydia for Marishka, and then we have Sifi Taras, which we'll be able to lock out and not take the nuke from Taras because Taras's damage is incredibly high. Now you can build your champions in high bolster and try to tank him. Not really my favorite approach. I just like to um, lock him out and not let him do his abilities. Now here is really interesting because we have a position where Sifi's taking a turn, and Taras has taken a turn also, but Necrit is in two turns stone skin. The little trick you can do here to make sure Necrit takes two turns is after you lock him out, you can just go ahead and attack the champion that is ally protected by him. He would decrease his cooldown by one turn on his ally attack, and he'll go ahead and do his ally attack, and then bait the stone skin off him. And now we're able to kill off the Necrit, and then we can kill off Sifi which would then not allow Sifi to be incredibly tanky or wait for Necrit stone skin to fall off. So there we go. Now we want to make sure we do not um, get sheeped, although there's a few issues here. If I lock out Taras um, with the A3, it works because he has bone armor on. Uh, it's represented by this little thing. We'll go ahead and lock him so he doesn't have his abilities. Now, a really interesting thing about uh, Taras is if you lock his active abilities, he will not counter. If you lock his passive abilities, he will also not counter. So Lydia is a massive, massive counter to Taras and Marishka because she has an ability that works against both of them. And countering two champions with one, that's the chef kiss of arena offense. You need to make sure you bring champions and make teams as versatile as possible. Now, one champion countering two big passives like that, that's just golden. With how busted passives are, Lydia is actually the GOAT champion right now. UDK is another really good free champion that's been given out. Um, but Lydia is also a free champion that you can get from Faction Wars. Um, she is incredible. So yeah, you can try that trick if the Terrace does not have block debuffs. If you use A3 from Lydia, you block out his active abilities. He won't be doing his counterattack because, I'll show you, his counterattack is actually a passive on his active ability. Don't, don't ask me why he has 16 passives. I don't know, okay? It's, it is what it is. The passive has an active which you can block if you block the active. Yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. If you lock out his active abilities, you lock out his passive, basically. That's, that's the main point here. That's the takeaway. So Lydia is very effective against the duo. Again, we have multiple revivers here and we have Taras and Marishka. So same team. We'll just run our team. We're running Lydia for Marishka not to get the revive. Yumiko mainly to stop Taras nuking. We don't actually mind the second reviver because we're going to kill the second revivers first. We'll see. We 
mainly focused on the reviver that's the fastest here arbiter is the faster reviver so you can go for arbiter try killing her first and then you can try to kill sifi um second however you think is best now this arbiter does not have um strengthen so i'm going to try to ally attack kill her Ooh, okay we can just finish her off there and then sifi is the tankier champion we'll try sifi next the block debuff has fallen off Taras, so we can go ahead and um we can go on ahead and lock his passives or i can show you another trick that also works is if you land hex on the boy Taras, you go ahead and hit marishka Taras will counter attack you and his stun chance bounces back to him another thing you can abuse you've got to turn these champions on themselves because they have so many passives and so much broken stuff that is an interaction with yumiko by the way if you run yumiko on your team you land hex on um if you land hex on taras uh, and then you hit marishka there will be a bounce back of the stun now the stun has to be checked for accuracy versus resistance so whoever attacked marishka needs to have lower resistance than taras's accuracy it's basically an accuracy resistance check between those champions and if taras passes the accuracy check then the stun will be bounced back so it's not as consistent as you know not everybody's running high accuracy taras's although some might be but anyway that's a little interaction you can play with and that's what you can do with yumiko but I generally prefer going the lockout with Lydia and not getting the counter attacks onto your team. Um, but yeah, let's keep moving. Let's see this team. Scarville, this is a very interesting defense. Same offense I'll use is a Marishka plus a revive team. It has Necrit, so we're going to be doing the Necrit trick where we hit whoever is ally protected so we can bait Necrit stone skin off him. Uh, there's our lockout. We're going to start with AoE so we can hit the opponent. And Necrit, it's not taken a turn yet. Hmm, I don't think any... I think Duchess's turn meter means that she's taken a turn because she's so slow. So I'm going to go ahead and kill her first. She procs with parry, which is not good for us, but it's all good. We have decreased, de <laughs> we have decreased defense and weaken over here. Uh, so I'm going to try the ally attack into him. Uh, there was a reaction in there somewhere, I believe. It looked like there was a reaction proc, but it was on Necrit's A1, so maybe only one reaction, not multiple. There is the two turns from Necrit that we baited. Uh, we're going to go ahead and kill off Sifi first, and then we're going to move on to um, Necrit because he's ally protecting Marishka, so we want to get the ally protection down. I can also flex too. If I was really feeling myself, I would try killing this Marishka. I could try it because this is Mask's account and he has a plus four five star. This flex could go wrong. We might not kill Marishka, but let's see the damage. Go on. Go on, Turbo. He did not even need the second hit. He killed her with a single hit. Now, you might say it was an 89 khb marishka but she was ally protected she was ally protected she died she had 82 khb with ally protection he does massive damage turvold does huge damage remember that was one hit of his two hit ability he killed an ally protection marishka with just one hit obviously you know you can say bad build or wherever else but it proves the point he does mad lad damage uh let's take a look at a maybe a interesting sort of harima team now this i believe is a nuke harima i have lydia built in bolster i'll show you all the builds at the end i just want to go through a few fights so here we're gonna have kaima reset lydia we don't really need lydia on this team because they're not running marishka so we can bring cardiel in no not cardiel cardiel instead of lydia do i have that team yes right here okay this seems to be <laughs> A very tailored team for this defense. Maybe I saw it at reset sometime. So let's go ahead and let Yumiko lock us. We will then reset. Um, we don't have our own lockout, which is interesting. We will have to do with our block revive. Maybe Lydia would have been good in this fight. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I do need to reset because I don't believe I reset just yet. We are going to have an issue where we kill Duchess, 
Sifi revives Duchess. We kill Duchess again because Sifi's already done her revive, right? Then we kill Sifi next because she's the only one we can see. Down she goes. Um, Harima's on the team, but we're still doing big damage. As I explained before, um, Turvold's damage isn't mitigated too hard by, Marish uh, by Harima. I'm going to go ahead and kill her. Could be problematic because she is a nuke champion. I probably should have killed Harima first, not let the nuke live, but it worked out either way. Uh, let's just go ahead and keep fighting. This sort of team, no. There are a few ways you can fight this team. I would generally say you want this team. I would fight this team because this defense, this very defense is run by Panda Reset. He runs this defense and I've lost to it by using my Turvold team because his champions are very, very fast. However, I could show you this team. It will work against this team. But again, I wouldn't run it against a very strongly built team. I would probably switch to the single Rodos versus the count that's heavily, heavily empowered. But this team can still do a job against this. We want to make sure we kill the Reviver first. The threat is if Cycle of Magic procs on one of the Terraces, they just go ahead of you and then just start taking nukes, which is not what we want. Uh, his CF is slow too, so she didn't do increased speed. So we have ample time to get through our nukes. Um, we can just go ahead and do the debuffs. We take the two hits. Uh, we can try this there, so we can stun one of them whenever we hit Marishka, which we are going to do now. Our Necrit is going to go ahead and hit Marishka, and then there's going to be a counter, and then there's a stun. The second one won't stun because he doesn't have Hex. We can go ahead and kill this one. Uh, she's going to lock him out, so neither of them have abilities. Now, this looks great now, but it could have been completely different if the builds were much, much higher. I do run this team on reset too, so it is my go-to offense for reset. Although, the teams I fight with this team might look slightly different because I know what kind of builds people run at reset. However, there is one day left to reset. I couldn't wait any longer in the week, but I do run this offense on reset myself. It's my go-to offense. Barring a few very special defenses, this is what I would run. Uh, against this team, this is also what I run. I believe this um, Mithrala is immunity, so it can't be bombed. I do like to bomb teams, uh, if I do say so myself. I will do a showcase on the bomb team as well. As you can see, right at the top, I am. I do have bomb presets. Um, but yeah, I will make a showcase for the bombs, bombs as well at some point. But I wanted to get this one out first. And then maybe I'll do a bomb in a, in a couple of days. But here we go. We'll see a fight versus a non-Marishka team this time. Uh, we are just going ahead and locking them out. Very interesting that this uh, Duchess kind of resisted me. Uh, but I don't think it'll be too much of an issue. Because I'll just kill her off. With the second hit. No, we didn't kill her with the second hit. The ally attack should finish the job. Nice and easy. I do believe that to be a 3%, but I don't know. Maybe it's just incredible resistance, uh, but I do think it's a 3%. Let's see what we have. We want to kill off Harima because people are building Harima with a lot of damage reduction. We don't have our big ability, so we're not going to be able to kill her here. Ally attack. We do not have enough damage with ally attack. Seems to be we did not crit because we didn't have our increased crit rate there. So a little bit of an issue. But I don't think we would have killed even if we had increased crit rate there. So we're going to go ahead and kill her off this turn. Go over to the right. We have a provoke on us, but we have cardio to cleanse our off for us. We're going to ally attack, try to kill off Mithrala. And then we have the big nuke for UDK. Did not get the job done. UDK becomes very tanky after his allies die on the team. Um, let's do one or two more fights versus Marishka. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see if we have any tough ones. This is an interesting one. It has UDK, Duchess, uh, Taras. Again, mainly the team I'm running looks like it's the Mario Revive team I'm running. The Yumiko Lockout, the Lydia Block Revive. Um, my Yumiko generally goes before most teams. And then we pick off whoever we think we can. Here's the Duchess. We have another 3% right here, but that's okay. If you get 3%ed on Taras, I would recommend locking out Taras with uh, Lydia. So you can always get around him there. We're going to go for this. 
there he goes now we can just focus on marishka because the stone skin's falling off only one hit's gonna go into her 308k man 308k oh that's the second hit of a two-hit ability sometimes it just it really is fun to watch it really is fun to watch when your turboed does do big damage that is the showcase let me show you the builds and the masteries i'm running on my champion i will move my camera because when i'm in this position a lot of people do tell me that i'm covering up the stats i'll quickly just whoop come over here so this is my Taras. now he is a plus four five star awakened this is this are these are my stats um 8.7k attack some might say that's incredible number some might say it's not 9k attack listen you know you build the best champion you can you build the best turbo you can if you want to build him with 70 percent crit rate for more damage you can do i do recommend it although you saw in some fights there will be some ally attacks that you don't land with uh increased crit rate or you might not crit with the ally attack but the nuke from turbo will always be uh with increased crit rate so you don't have to worry there it's just the ally attack that sometimes misses the crit if necrit goes before turbo so we want to build turbo faster than necrit 70 percent crit rate 180 speed right there i would say the speed ranges from 180 to 210 364 crit damage that is quite massive that is quite huge if i do say so myself that's quite big impressive um he is wearing the best gear on the account then i have lydia in bolster immortal i have her slower than my kaima in the kaima team i'm running her in i have a little bit of accuracy to lock out terraces uh decreased defense and weaken is okay you don't necessarily need it you want to stay away from getting sheeped at the vital point when marishka is about to do the revive so when you kill marishka make sure lydia is not sheeped uh, I'll quickly show you masteries as I go along. These are the masteries I've taken. I did not need the crit rate mastery, so I took the attack mastery. Um, these are the masteries. I'm running Helm Smasher behind me. I'm going to move one more time to make sure you guys get the masteries. I'll move to the center. Then we have Lydia's masteries. She has Eagle Eye and then she has some sort of damage masteries. I wouldn't really recommend damage masteries. I would probably be changing these to more support type masteries. Uh, eagle eye is not really that important you can go elixir for more bolster value that's what i would recommend um, elixir for bolster then we have yumiko now this is a very good yumiko i've been working on this yumiko for a while uh, you can see she's six star awakened um, she's plus two two uh, she is 345 900 accuracy the higher the accuracy of the yumiko the better it is Fast Yumiko is okay, but in my opinion, for the Turbo team, you want to make sure you lock out Revivers. You do not want Revivers to not get locked out, so make sure you're locking them out. Also, we're running the Accuracy Auras on the team too. So, nice, nice, massive Accuracy is really good. Perception, Refresh um, are recommended. Masteries, I'll quickly show you the Masteries. Here they are. Uh, just behind me, Necrit. We are running Stone Skin Necrit, high HP, one reaction and refresh. More refresh you can get, better. Um, in terms of reaction, I have him not zero speed. I have him slightly slower than my turbo, so we get more ally attacks and more damage, just so we can kill off more things quicker. Um, so reaction isn't really that important because I do expect nukers to go before me and even if they go before me i'm not expecting too many strip champions there is yuko but on yuko teams not really trying to counter getting stripped and nuked on the same turn so this is just my best reaction ring i'm running right now six piece stone skin this is the roto setup these four champions my kaima is in four piece stone skin massive resistance 931 224 speed if you want to run kaima to resist high accuracy champions make sure you have a good amount of resistance four star uh, helps too you don't really need this much resistance there are mainly speed yumikos that are running around or speed warlords or resistance warlords and resistance yumikos however this type of resistance will make sure you are safe against anybody who's trying the high high accuracy build on the team you can if you're 
trying to get away from high accuracy lockout you can run necrate lead and you can run lydia lead too uh, so it's nice little nice little pop boost to your resistance um, cardio stone skin decent amount of resistance the resistance on cardio is high enough and the speed is slow enough so yuko goes before him and does not strip him unless you get three percented into the 50 50 for the stone skin so super low chance uh, yuko strips and stuns you it, it's a really low chance but you can get three percented by yuko's they strip you and then you lose the 50 50 on stone skin you get stripped and then you get stunned by the stun chance on the stun set which i can quickly check what it is what is the stun chance on a stun set uh 18 percent chance so again pretty low chance to get stunned too uh which other champions did we use that seems to be it those seem to be all the champions i'm running i'm running i'll uh, show you guys the masteries if i've forgotten i get a lot of comments all the time telling me that i forgot to show you the masteries the resistance mastery on cardio these are the masteries i'm running on him something similar for kaima again high resistance kaima is what i'm running too so those are the builds those are the champions that is the team that's the big turbo team the big team i've been running to counter the marishka meta the meta is slow the meta is running a lot of stone skin but there are openings um, at some time that you want to take advantage of and you want to go ahead and single target kill them. If you have a turbo, you can go ahead and use a turbo. If you don't have a turbo, you can try Little Miss Annie. But the best champion in this team is turbo in my opinion. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.